Not too long ago, I tried my hand at making speakers that I thought would be better than Bose. And although the cubes looked really good, I didn't think the sound quality was quite what I was looking for. And recently, I got a new piece of machinery that I think could make these speakers not only look better, but sound better. In fact, I think these just might be the Bose killers. How am I gonna do this? Let me go ahead and show you how I designed the Bose killers and what I think is the best value tool that I own in my entire shop, the Acer P20 Plus. Let's get built. Before we get too far into the laser, let's rewind a little and talk a little bit about the project. Now these Bose speakers shouldn't just sound good, they need to look good as well. And that's where this laser really comes in handy. Because of this laser, we can make a really unique, nice, modern design that can look good in your house, not just sound good. And so I went ahead and opened up my program and I designed this enclosure for the speaker. And I decided we'd do a multi-sack process by cutting it out with some quarter inch material. This is something that you can do with a laser that you may not be able to do with other pieces of machinery. And this is what takes this project to the next level. So let's go ahead and set up the Acer laser and get cutting. This box right here is really cool. This is called Air Assist. Now, typically on a laser engraver, this costs a lot extra, typically around 140 bucks or so, which can add quite a bit to it. This laser actually comes with it. This should allow for cleaner cuts and less burning. That burned through that with ease. In fact, that only took one pass to cut all the way through and left no burn residues because of that air assist. And because this is such a small laser, there's virtually no waste at all. Now there is a little bit of residue left on the sides, which I wanna take care of with a little bit of sandpaper and maybe just a little bit of ingenuity as well. The great thing about using a laser engraver is that you can engrave and cut through. So on the bottom and top pieces, I just engraved the holes in and on the rest of them, I cut evenly spaced holes that I could fit a one quarter inch dowel in. Now the cool thing about this is since they're evenly spaced, I can flip my design any which way. And because of that, I'm getting this really nice, cool wave stack pattern that I'm really loving.
thing left is to cut out a hole for the driver and drill some holes out for the binding post on the back. For this, I just use a three inch hole saw and use the appropriate drill bit for my binding post. For the finish, I did use General Finishes Armor Seal, which I absolutely love, and you should definitely give it a try. Although, I did have to get a little bit creative on how I got it in between the waves. But, where there's a will, there's a way. Now that we have this thing looking good, thanks to the Teaser P20 laser, we need this to sound good as well. Now I first had to pick out a driver and for that I went to Parts Express website. Now, if you want 5% off, make sure to use the code TOYD, which I'll link down below. But I found these PC83-4, which are relatively inexpensive. And according to their spec sheet, it looks like they're going to be a full range driver that can reach all the way up to 20 kilohertz, which is huge because the bows really weren't any good past 10 kilohertz, or at least that's what a lot of people have stated. Now it's time to install these in the enclosure and get some measurements with my Omni mic and my DATs. The response is exactly what I expected it to be. If you notice, the response has a rising high end, and that's because of a phenomenon called baffle step. Basically, what that means is there's gonna be some frequencies that wavelengths are so long they're gonna wrap around the back of the enclosure and they're not gonna project forward towards the listener as well. So we have that transition point called baffle step where those waves that are shorter than the baffle width are gonna start projecting forward towards the listener. And we need to attenuate that down. Don't worry for a full range driver, this is very simple. We just use what we call a baffle step compensation circuit. This is just two components an inductor and a resistor. We're gonna run these right in line with the positive side of the driver, and we have what looks already like a really nice flat response. But we're not quite done yet. I don't like that rising response on the high end, so I'm gonna throw a capacitor there on the bottom and connect that to the ground. And by doing that, we went ahead and brought that back down. And now this response is looking really good. Now we have a speaker that sounds as good as it is looking. And honestly, I would dig these over any Bose cubes any day. Now the question is, could I have done this without the Acer P20 Plus laser? Sure, I could have done it without it, but it would not have looked nearly as good. And I definitely would have got this unique of a design. And the truth of the matter is, I think it's time for people to realize that DIY is changing and CNC's, lasers, 3D printers, they're here to stay. And the sooner you get on board with that, I think the sooner your projects are gonna be able to evolve. So if you've been looking for a laser, I don't know of a better value out there than the Acer P20 Plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that down below. So if you want one, you can go ahead and pick it up. All right guys, you tell me what you think of the laser and of the project. This is Toys DIY Audio and I'm out.